throughout the day, one of the things we'll tell you is stay curious. That is really the, the mindset, a curiosity mindset is one of the main commonalities between all the laureates of the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. It wasn't enough to that somebody said, this is the way it is so. What they wanted to know is, man, you know, how, how why, when, where? And that curiosity mindset is what kept them going um, to discover some truly wonderful things. One of the other things we have is a program called the Medi the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame Award for medical students. So I don't know if you know, there are 17 medical schools in Canada. And right now on your screen are last year's recipients of these medical of the award. They're second year medical students. But again, just a few years ago, we're sitting in high school chairs just like you and uh, trying to think about what it is they wanted to do with their careers and found a path to medicine for them. Um, and uh, their bios and uh, uh, details about who they are and what their journey and paths have been are also on our website. So it is my pleasure to now get us moving along to the main part of this particular part of this session, and that is to uh, hear from our keynote lecture. But before we do, I would like to introduce you to Dr. Preston Smith. Dr. Smith is the Dean of, Me of the College of Medicine at the University of Saskatchewan, and is also a board member of the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. He hails originally um, having done all his education at Dalhousie University. He's a fellow of the College of Family Physicians of Canada and is uh, extremely well known for his, um, his prowess, I guess we can say, as a medical educator and administrator. So I'm going to turn it over now to you, Dr. Smith. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Lisa, and, and welcome. Welcome to this, uh, this uh, great event uh, of Discovery Days. I certainly hope you have a very, very enjoyable day with us. Um, you know, very briefly, uh, I, I, um, I'm a, I, I'm a uh, settler uh, from the Maritime Provinces, as you would have heard. You know, I'm a, a husband, a, a father, uh, you know, a family doctor, um, a runner, a uh, pretty good gardener and a really bad golfer, uh, but I love lots of things and and, and uh, key among that, although not necessarily first, is 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 my career, and uh, it's been a wonderfully rewarding career in medicine. And despite the title and some of the neat jobs I've had, the best work I've ever done has been the 24 years I did as a frontline family doctor. Uh, you're going to hear from 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 uh, you know. Uh, practitioners of all sorts today about the amazing opportunities uh, in in in, uh, in healthcare um, in in all fields, not simply medicine. Uh, we, this is a team sport. Uh, we need fabulous people in all the health professions to deliver great healthcare, and I just hope you have a great opportunity today uh, to learn about those possibilities. Um, you know, back to my own background. I, I, I point out that, um, uh, you know, I come from a large extended family uh, and almost uh, uh, none of the generation before me went to university. And even in my 65 plus first cousins, there's not another doctor. Um, and yet I've had, uh, you know, from that background of not necessarily being exposed, I, I, I've had the good fortune of being exposed enough to these kinds of opportunities, and it has led me through uh, to an amazingly rewarding ca career in healthcare. And I just encourage all of you to think that anything's possible um, and, and to dream big. And with that, I'm really pleased to pass things over to our keynote speaker, who, as you would have seen on the screen, uh, was a recipient of our student award last year as a second year student. Uh, this year, she's a third year student at Queens. Uh, she's from Nunavut, originally from um, Iqaluit, and now, of course, in Kingston, uh, con con continuing her studies. Um, she's, she's passionate about rural medicine, about Indigenous health, and about mental health. 
um, and she's here uh, to talk to you today about her journey uh, in, in, into and through medical school. And I uh, really uh, want to welcome, uh, uh, congratulate a Angelina on her award last year and her continuing progress in medical school. And uh, I turn it over to Angelina Mendel. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith, for the wonderful introduction. And also thank you to the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame for inviting me to speak to all of you guys today about my story. Um, I actually discovered the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame when I was in your shoes in high school. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. There's, there's people who did amazing things. I want to be like them. Um, there was no one from Nunavut though, so that was kind of sad. But <laughs> I, I really wanted to be like the people that were on the website. So I highly recommend go check them out, find a role model. Uh, there's lots of amazing personalities out there. I'm gonna start off by sharing my screen. I hope this is gonna go right. Uh, okay. And full screen. I hope yeah, we're seeing it just great, Angelina. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so um, I named my presentation Life is a Puzzle, My Journey to Medical School. And I don't know about you guys, but when I was little, I used to love doing puzzles. Uh, I don't know what kids do nowadays when they were younger, like TikToks maybe, but <laughs> I used to do puzzles and... Um, yeah. And so you, when you do a puzzle, you know, you have all of these pieces that are scrambled and it's you don't really know what the picture is going to look like. Um, and sometimes, especially bigger puzzles, 1000 pieces more like they can be really hard to solve. They're challenging. And that's kind of like life. Life, you don't always know what the final picture is going to look like. And sometimes life is very challenging and you just you just want to quit. But, you know, when the pieces of the puzzles start to fall in place, you start to see a picture. And that's what happened in my journey to medical school. I started to see a picture and that's what continues to drive me to follow my passions. And hopefully one day your picture will start to form as well as the puzzle pieces fall in for your life. And um, you figure out what you want to do when you grow up. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to share a little bit about my life. Uh, this is a fake Facebook profile thing that I did. I thought we're virtual. Why not go super virtual? Um, so I was born 22 years ago, according to this Facebook post, uh, in India to a couple of my parents. And I was the only child and still am. So I get a lot of attention uh, just because I'm an only child. Um, but yeah, we were we were doing great. And then that's me looking adorable, and that's my dad. Um, when I was four years old, my parents decided to move to Canada. Well, okay, it was actually my dad who decided. Uh, he is a super adventurous guy. He uh, used to actually climb the Himalayas when he was a young lad. And so uh, he was kind of like, let's do something cool. And we decided to move to Canada, which was known as the land of opportunities back then. But moving to Canada was a difficult time for my parents because of systemic barriers. They both had undergrad and, and master's degrees in, in India, but when they came to Canada, they didn't have Canadian work experience and they didn't have Canadian education. So it was really difficult for them to find a job. And so for a few years, we moved around to different places, trying to find a nice place to settle and find a stable job. We moved around in Toronto and Kempville, by the way, there's a message from my mom. She was offended that I didn't include a picture of her in my presentation. She's a photographer of most of these pictures. Uh, so here's a picture of her and me as a baby looking directly at the camera and looking kind of grumpy, probably because I wanted a nap or something. But <laughs> um, so yeah, we moved around for a few years. And when I was nine years old, so five years after coming to Canada, we moved to Iqaluit, Nunavut. And oh, I think there's I think there's one student from Nunavut who is attending today. And if you're out there, shout out to you. I also graduated from Inukshuk High School, so it's great to have someone from my high school here today. Um, but yeah, for those of you who don't know, Iqaluit is the capital city of Nunavut, which is located on the traditional lands of the Inuit. When we moved there, I was nine. I honestly had moved around so much, I didn't really think much about it, but my parents were frankly, kind of scared. They had grown up in a country where the temperature was like plus 40 degrees Celsius, and they are coming to a place where, you know, it can get as low as minus 60s in the in the winter. 
so they were terrified that they that it was going to be too cold for them and also um as you can see in the picture below there's no trees <laughs> um my dad and i are standing on the tundra uh, it's above the tree line so it was a very different geographical area for them and they wondered if they would enjoy living there and honestly within only a few weeks we fell in love with living in Nunavut especially with the community um my community members welcomed us to their land with such warmth and uh like Inuit culture has many similarities with Indian culture especially the community-based nature uh, of indigenous cultures and that really appealed to us and we just loved uh, living in Iqaluit and have stayed there ever since. Uh, still live there. I don't live in Iqaluit anymore. I live in Baker Lake, Nunavut. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's kind of like right there in the geographical center of Canada. So it, the Canada is around my hometown, I like to say now. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I'm a settler, but uh, I am very happy to live in this territory. And I know you're wondering like, okay, so five minutes have gone by and I still have no clue where medicine comes into all of this. Um, so around middle school, high school, I was a really outgoing kid. I wanted to get involved in the community. And so I, I got involved in a lot of stuff. I got involved with clubs at my school, the environmental club, the um, positive space club. I got involved. In, I was a nerd. I got involved in the math club. Uh, I also was part of the Inukshuk High School Band. I played the trumpet. I was part of the Inukshuk Drum Dancers Choirs. You can see me in the middle there in the background. Um, I was also involved in the community. I joined the Iqaluit Fiddle Club and I taught violin at the summer music camps. I was the French Storytime Coordinator at the local library. I volunteered at the Nunavut Food Bank, Soup Kitchen, Nunavut Kamatsiaktu Helpline, and that's where my passion for mental health really began. So this was all in high school and I just really wanted to get involved. And I think I made a good decision getting involved because of two main things that happened. Firstly, it helped me to find mentors, whether they were teachers or community members, instructors, coaches, elders. There was people there who were willing to support me through my journey as I tried to discover myself. And the second thing that happened was I was able to have a broader perspective of the world around me. And so I started to notice a few things. I noticed that Iqaluit, where I was living, was the only community in Nunavut with a hospital and full-time physician services. There were health centers in all of the other communities that were mostly run by nurses. And I live in Baker Lake now, so I have experienced what it's like to live with a health center. I also noticed that whenever I went to the hospital, I would see a different pediatrician every time. It was a different visiting doctor. I would have to repeat my story. Sometimes I would get lost to follow up. It, it was troublesome in a, in a way. I also, well, sometimes when anything was just a little bit complex, we would have to go to Ottawa for a medical travel. And that was difficult on my family because I would have to you know, skip school and then you have to do all the homework and catch up. My parents would have to skip work to take me to um, these appointments in Ottawa. Um, it was just really difficult. And especially when you're sick and not feeling your best, I can imagine that uh, being away from family can be very difficult for people. And also um, I noticed that there was a severe shortage of physicians and uh, that's why we relied on mostly visiting doctors. We did have a few people living in, in Iqaluit providing care, but reliance on visiting doctors, I noticed some of my community members were kind of frustrated that not all of the doctors would understand how to provide culturally appropriate care. And that has gotten better over time as it's been incorporated into medical curriculum, but um, still without living in the North, it's hard to understand what the lifestyle is like. And Inuit culture and values are also very unique. And so I thought, well, how can I help solve this problem? I thought I was pretty good at academics. I was hardworking. I liked sciences and I loved helping others and interacting with people. And most of all, I grew up in the North and I was familiar with the lifestyle there. And so I decided that I wanted to be a doctor. And that was my dream. That was the first time I had a dream. But, you know, dreams uh, are don't really come through to yeah, don't really come true through heart uh, through like magic. It, you really need to have some hard work. Um, 
determination and honestly a little bit of good luck is what I've noticed. Um, getting into medical school is a long pathway ahead. Uh, four years of undergrad, after that you have to do exams like the MCAT and other stuff. Uh, and then you apply to medical school, you do interviews. If you get in and get accepted, uh, it's very competitive. But if you get accepted, then you have to do four years of medical school. And then after medical school, you get to choose which specialty you want to go in. So uh, family medicine is a two year residency program and um, surgery and other cool things like cardiology, neurology, anesthesiology, all of those are five year programs. Um, and then afterwards, you might do more education. So it's a long path ahead, 10 to 13 years minimum. And so when I chose to do medicine, I would have to commit to this 10 year pathway. And I knew that. But you know, like it, it sounds difficult, but it's it's a really rewarding field to get into, especially at the end of the day when a patient thanks you for like saving their life or just making them feel better when they're at their most vulnerable and feeling sick and not doing well. It's so rewarding to hear that and see that you've made a difference in their life. And medical school and medicine in general is super fun. You get to do a lot of procedures and see cute babies for well baby checks. It's, it's a great uh, and very fun and rewarding career path. I have a lot of friends who didn't get into medical school the first time around, so they tried again because, you know, it, it's, it's a great uh, career choice and I'm glad I chose this one. Um, so I was looking ahead to the 10 to 13 year pathway and then I came across this thing called the Q-Arms program. Uh, the the Q-Arms program is unique to Queen's University. It's called the Queen's Accelerated Route to Medical School. It's basically a six year pathway. Right from high school, you do two years of this hybrid like Q arms curriculum and uh, a few prerequisite undergraduate courses. And then you go straight to medical school without the exams and all of the competitive um, stuff in between. And then you do residency like everyone else. It's a phenomenal pathway into medical school, but the only problem is they only accept 10 exceptional students from across Canada. So very competitive, just 10 positions per year. And um, when I found out about this, I was like, I'm not going to get in. I'm just like, you know, a small town girl living in a lonely world. You know, uh, I, I was I wasn't going to get in. But, you know, I'm going to try anyway. I'm just going to send that application. It doesn't hurt to write an application. So I'm just going to do that. So I applied and, you know, I got an email. I passed round one and then they told me to fill out a few forms and stuff. I did that and then I passed round two. I was like, oh, this is cool. And then I was invited to the final round, which was the Q-Arms interviews. And I was like, OK, I'm not going to get in, but, you know, uh, I'm going to go anyway and, and make this a learning opportunity. And I went there and I met the most phenomenal students there. There was amazing leaders in there, like high school students who were amazing leaders doing such I can't even express how like amazing stuff they were doing. There's people who were doing groundbreaking research in high school. And I just in that moment thought that I was a nobody. There's no way I could compete against these people. These people were so phenomenal, phenomenal and inspiring. And there's no way I would get in. And, and there's no like I'm, I'm a nobody. That's what I thought. By the way, if you ever go to interviews, don't wear a black suit because everyone wears a black suit. Wear something else if you want to stick out. <laughs> but then a month later after the interviews, I got a phone call and I had the great pleasure of being chosen as one of the 10 students into the program. And I just remember thinking to myself that I had thought of myself as a nobody, but I was a somebody. I was looking at everyone else, but I wasn't looking at myself. I wasn't looking at my own accomplishments. I wasn't looking at all of my hard work to get where I was. And I frankly was being unfair to myself. Um, so it taught me a lesson there to, to also value myself. And uh, I, I had the great pleasure of being a part of this program. And, and uh, it's, it's been a phenomenal experience. And so fast forward to today, I am currently in my third year of Queens uh, Medical School, uh, which is 
year five of the six year pathway I told you about for Q arms. Um, I, I can see them, the puzzle pieces are starting to fall in place for me. I can see that I, I'm maybe going to be, a, I'm going to be a future physician of Nunavut. I want to go back and give back to my community members who basically made me who I am today. Uh, I've started discovering new things about me. I discovered that I liked rural medicine and indigenous health and, and mental health, and I'm an advocate in these fields. I'm the co-chair of the National Society of Rural Physicians of Canada Student Committee. I am involved in many in indigenous health advocacy groups over the past years, and uh, I co-founded this program called RISE, which um, provides weekly check-ins to isolated uh, individuals during COVID-19 in rural areas of Canada. It's a mental health uh, kind of advocacy program. Uh, I also discovered I liked research and I published my very first study only uh, like last week uh, that I had done over the summer um, about physician mental health, rural physician mental health in Ontario during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I would have never imagined that I could get this far when I was in your shoes. I I wouldn't have imagined that I'd be speaking to you as a keynote speaker. <laughs> so it's been quite a journey and the puzzle pieces did fall in. Um, and life has a lot of surprises in store for you. Um, so yeah. And here's a few pictures to kind of summarize how fun medical school is. On the top left hand corner, you can see us doing simulations for trauma and how to respond when a trauma patient comes in. Uh, in the bottom left, there's a picture of us uh, in lecture just before clinical skills. So I'm wearing my white coat. Um, I've been involved in surgeries um, and, and just had the pleasure of seeing a lot of different patients uh, in, in their most vulnerable states and helping them recover. Um, I did research. So um, in October, I, whoa, I'm actually wearing the same blazer. <laughs> uh, I presented to about my research project uh, at a conference. I had the pleasure of being a part of an amazing class of 100 students um, who are all phenomenal and are going to be great doctors. And yeah, it's been such a wonderful journey and medicine has been so much fun. And I'm glad I chose this field. But my puzzle is not finished yet. I have a long way to go. I still need to graduate from medical school. I still need to go through residency and eventually become a doctor in Nunavut, find a job there and settle and a long way to go. But in my journey, I've learned a lot of different things. And I think hopefully these will help you in your own journey. And so here's a few take home messages I kind of um, came up with that hopefully will help you. The first one is find your calling. And by that, I mean, get involved. Get involved in school clubs, get involved in the community, volunteer if you can. If you can't volunteer, if you do a part-time job after school, then that's a great way to get involved as well because getting involved helps you find mentors and support people in your life. Uh, I had amazing teachers and a violin teacher and so many people in the community supporting me through my journey, which has been difficult at times. And that's why finding your passion is really important. It really helps you get through the difficult days and it makes you excited to get up for work every morning. Um, definitely in medicine, there are difficult days, especially when patients aren't doing well or that the day has been really stressful. But, you know, in the morning, I still wake up thinking I want to go back to the hospital. I, I want to go see my patients again. So find your calling. It really helps in many ways. And if you find a, a pathway that you end up not liking, it's okay to change paths and, and try something new. It's okay to always change and explore as much as you can. The second point I have for you is a chance not taken is an opportunity missed. If I hadn't applied to the Q Arms program, I would have missed an opportunity of a lifetime and all of the lessons that I've learned along the way. And well, by the way, the QRMS program used to be available to all high school students. It's currently only available to indigenous and black medical, uh, not medical students, high school students right now. Um, but it doesn't have to be QRMS. In terms of opportunities, it can be anything in life. Take that chance, make mistakes. If, if you fail, learn from your mistakes, learn from what happened in the situation and try again. Uh, I think that's the best way to approach things. And, you know, sometimes things click and, and you get a great opportunity out of that. 
Next one is love yourself. And by that, I mean, stop looking at others and start looking at yourself. If when I went to the QRMs interviews and I started thinking of myself as inferior, I wasn't being fair with myself. I wasn't looking at my own accomplishments, my own strengths and how hard I had been working. Um, so I really, really suggest that you find a way to love yourself because you are worth it. You are valuable. You might not always win, but you will be valuable no matter what. And uh, it's easier said than done. Sometimes we always tend to look at others and, and judge ourselves, but it's true. Love yourself. You are totally worth it. And my final one is embrace lifelong learning. And I find it really interesting that the t-shirt that you would get from, I think, uh, the survey has the words like, be curious. Uh, being curious is very important in the field of health sciences, as well as in everything you do, I think. Um, lifelong learning doesn't only involve like getting post-secondary education and, you know, all that stuff. Schooling is definitely one thing, but lifelong learning is about being self-motivated and, and finding ways to improve yourself from the moment you, from the moment before. Finding ways to evaluate the situation and self-reflect and see how you can be a better person. And uh, along the way, be curious, explore things, learn new things, and keep up with the evolving world that's constantly changing and new things are coming out all the time, uh, kind of like iPhones all the time. But, you know, lifelong learning, I think, is very important for both personal as well as professional success. One of the things I just wanted to ask a quick question of you, Angelina, it is demanding and you've pointed that out. Um, there is significant time commitments, but again and again, I hear med students like you say that, yep, it's demanding and it's a bit exhausting, but yeah, you keep going and never, it seldom seems to deter um, young, uh, really inspired individuals like you. So how do you keep going? What, what, do, what, what do you draw on to keep your strength going and to keep your energy going and even just keep your, um, your excitement and enthusiasm when, when, when you might some days feel like saying, Ugh, enough. <laughs> well, I definitely have days when I'm like, oh, that is totally enough. I want to just go to bed and go to sleep. I definitely have those days. But I feel like, again, as I said, finding your passion is really important because it's kind of your fire in you. Um, whenever I see a patient, even if it's just like saying hi to them at the in the morning during rounds, it just it just makes me so happy to see them smiling at 6 30 5 30 in the morning when i wake them up that they're smiling at me because i'm part of their care team and i'm trying to help to make them feel better and honestly i've noticed in medicine we make amazing differences in the life of a patient sometimes it seems not so good like I saw an amputation yesterday and I, I it broke my heart to see see this process happening but the patient was so thrilled because she was in so much pain and she she after the amputation her pain went away and she was living a better quality of life than before and just seeing these stories are these patient stories inspire me in turn and keep me going right. and make me feel that I'm making a difference. I'm part of the team. I'm learning and I'm also helping out. And it's so wonderful to see a patient in the morning and them thank you. Yeah. Love yourself is such a beautiful message, Angelina. And you're right. That is hard sometimes to do, but focusing on it, we're all worth it. Lifelong learning you know, it doesn't matter what that lifelong learning is in. We are here to tell you all about the health sciences students, but, but, keep learning and stay curious is certainly one of the mantras we have here at uh, the Canadian Medical Hall of Fame. Um, and and that mess, those messages resonated in your talk today. So we really appreciate that you've shared your time, you've shared your journey, your wisdom, your story's not done. There's a lot more to be written and we're excited to follow you along um, and hopefully have you back for future Discovery Days, particularly when you're back in the North and working and, and it'll be fascinating to hear, uh, <laughs> to hear what stories you have to tell them. All right, students, thank you again, Angelina. We really, really appreciate it.